They don't want you shine, dog. They don't want to see your name headline. Do it anyway. Hey, do it anyway. They wanna see you fall back. They don't wanna see you fall back. Do it anyway. Hey, do it anyway. Let's talk sports. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Listen, I, I've um. First of all, my name is Richard Cole, and, and nobody really knows who I am just yet. They're going to find out real quick, though. Uh, this is a podcast about Let's Talk Sports. Now, this podcast, I saying that I would love to have some people on this show um, that are athletes, play football, basketball, or whatever. This show is really about the fans. You can bet on um that's really what this show is about. Now, this is my first podcast, and no, I'm not nervous. I want everybody to understand that, look, uh, I'm 55 years old. I've been talking about football probably since I was six. I played the game, not at a high level, but I definitely played the game a lot. Um, love the game. Love the X and you know, the X and you know, uh, love, looking, love looking into organizations. Um, and I'm just gonna tell y'all like straight up. Some of y'all don't know nothing. I, I, I'm just being totally blunt with you. I have listened to people talk about football for a very long time. And I'm telling you, some of you guys don't know nothing. You're just talking. I mean, and, and, and when I see it, it, it just blows my mind. So on this show, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna bring people on the show who know this game. Let's talk sports. It's really more about football than basketball, but more football than basketball. So I know this is my first show, and you don't give a crap about who I am or what I'm about. That's cool. You're going you're gonna to give a crap before it's over. Because on this show, we're going to be picking winners, and we're going to be putting people in their place. And the reason I say put people in their place is because I'm not a name caller, so you would never see on this show me dogging anybody or talking about anybody personally. I don't care about what happened in their personal life. That's not my business. But I do care about what you do on that field because football is a business, and people bet. They gamble. And on this show, I'm going to be giving picks. So if a player is not playing right, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. If a team is not playing right, yeah, I'm going to give it to you. But it's never personal. It's just about how they play, not how they live. I need to get that straight and I'm going to say it again. It's how they play, not how they live. That's not my business. And I respect every single soul that plays sports. You know why? Because I know how hard it is. And I, and I played at a very small level. I know how hard the game is. I know how hard the preparation is. I know how hard it is to keep yourself in physical shape. It is something you have to love to do. And I love watching those who love to play. That is my favorite pastime. Some people say baseball, not mine. Mine is watching these young kids do their thing on their football field. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch. Now, last week, if you're a part of my Facebook page, last week I had some picks. I mean, I, I got to go through these picks, y'all, because this is so funny to me. So um, uh, my wife and I, we, we are, we're all on vacation. We're having a good time. And we sit in a restaurant, and my wife said, oh, my God, Southern plays LSU. The first thing out of my mouth, I don't laugh, the first thing out of my mouth was, what's the point spread? Because I knew it would be huge. But, oh, my God, when I seen 49 and a half, hey, guys, I live in Baton Rouge. I live right here where LSU and Southern is. And I'm sitting up here telling you right now, I knew from that moment that LSU was not going to beat them by 50 points. I knew that. I was like, no way. Southern has too much pride. We understand. It's two different divisions of football. One is a lot more polished, bigger, bigger linemen. And, and one is a skill level part. These guys can go at it, but mostly LSU just kind of carries the weight. 49 and a half, not going to happen. And it didn't. LSU did not cover. Now, I don't do college games, but that was just so tempting. I couldn't help it. I just had to, guys. 49 and a half, no. So I went live after the game to tell everybody, not going to happen. Hard to beat a team by 50 points. Not saying it can't be done, 
But I mean, how many people really, how many people keep their starters in when they got a 35 point lead? I mean, that's like retarded, right? Coach should get fired to keep their starters in when they're about 35. Now, the backup go in there and run up about another 40 points. Hey, let's rock and roll. Let's go. But the starters, no. So I knew they would take the starters out. That's why it's hard to beat a team by 50. <clears throat> that being said, also, my Sunday picks were I said the Houston Texans would not lose by eight points to the Indianapolis coach. Guys, come on now. Indianapolis has been dominating Houston for almost five years. I mean, they've been dominating them. It's, yeah, I don't even know if there were one of those two games they play a year was even close because Indianapolis just beating the snot out of them. But the only difference was Houston had coaching issues. Well, I'm not going to say they had issues. I'm just going to say they had issues. They really did. I mean, not the interim coach, but the coach before that, yeah, yeah, he was a problem. He actually traded DeAndre Hopkins. Are you freaking kidding me? You you traded DeAndre Hopkins. I, I still, I, I, help me understand that, please. I mean, I don't, don't know what you got for him because I don't see it yet. I'm just saying it, it was crazy. It was a crazy, crazy trade. Okay. The second the, 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 and, and the reason, the biggest reason why I said Houston would not be beat by eight and a half points is because they got Lovey Smith, man. You know Lovey Smith went to a Super Bowl, right? You know how hard it is for a coach to take a team to the Super Bowl. You got to give people props when that happens. They don't forget how to be champions. Nobody forgets how to be a champion. I mean, so total, total, total disrespect to Lovey Smith. Okay. The next game I picked was the Chicago Bears and San Francisco 49ers. Now, I'm going to tell you, I had an inside tip on that, and I'm going to tell you what the inside tip was. It wasn't a person. It was people. I was actually in Chicago, went to the Navy Pier, went to with the Soldier Field, talked to mostly 49ers fans. That, that was crazy. Huh? I wasn't talking to the Bears fans. I was talking to the 49ers fans. And the 49ers fans were very talkative, by the way, and they were telling me, hey, we're going to beat them. But it's gonna close. It's gonna be close, and and they, and they all kept saying this one name. They kept saying this one name, like it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Uh, Justin Fields, Justin Fields, damn right, Justin Fields. Every single Sporting United fan that I talked to mentioned Justin Fields' name. It's his second year, but believe me, he already got people looking at him. He's on the radar already, and the way he played against the Forty Niners, even though he had a slow start, was unbelievable. So that was my second game. I picked the Bears, and I literally picked the Bears because of what the 49ers were, the fans were saying. <laughs> I know that's crazy, huh? but it's the truth. In the third game I had, which I'm a little disappointed in, and I'm going to tell you why, I had the Jets, and I didn't think Baltimore would cover. The reason why I didn't think Baltimore would cover is because they had so much turmoil. Lamar Jackson hadn't signed. I thought the team would be in kind of sort of disarray, but it didn't turn out that way. And, and, and I like Lamar Jackson, and I like Baltimore, so I was kind of happy. But let me tell you who, who I, I was totally disappointed in. I'm just going to say this how it is. Flacco, come on, man. I mean, really, Flacco? Flacco, I was the one in front of the TV when Baltimore was playing against Denver. And you were you had such a good game. You were allowed to be Peyton Manning and go to the Super Bowl. And I had so much respect for you because I didn't actually think you could do it then. And, and you've done it. But when you were out there Sunday, it literally looked like you were not interested. And I know that's impossible, but it just looked that way. Either you looked like you wasn't interested or you looked like you weren't comfortable in the pocket like you don't trust your line. And I can understand that because I know for a fact in football, if most people don't know this, but every leg hurts. Now, you tough guy, big guy, too. You take the leg, you can get up, but you know as well as I know the next day you're going to feel that leg. You may not feel it right then, but you, ooh, that thigh bruise, ooh, some ribs, oh, you're going to feel that. You're going to feel it. I think you just, I think you just, it may be past your time. I don't know. 
I mean, like I said, I've never played on that level, so I can't tell you if you passed the time, but I'm I'm thinking that I'm thinking that it is. I like you though. I think you're a cool dude. I don't know you personally, but I think you're a cool quarterback. You um you just didn't play well. Now I don't honestly think you're gonna play well next week either, but that's just me. With all that being said, those were my picks. So let's talk sports went three and one last week. I'm literally trying to go undefeated this week. Three and one is strong, even though I really felt like I should have been four and old. Four and old. So all that being said, I'm going to share some things with you guys. A lot of y'all expect this. Some of y'all don't. I don't care. This is what I do care about. I'm going to go ahead and say this. This is just a thought. New Orleans Saints, Sean Payton, retires. Um, I never believed he was retired. I always believed that it was just an escape. I believe Sean Payton did not like what the general manager at New Orleans was doing. Now, Sean Payton is a nice guy, and he's definitely a team guy and an organizational guy. This is not something he's going to come out, and if he has said it, I hadn't heard about it, and come out and say anything negative about New Orleans, then he shouldn't. I mean, he won a Super Bowl there. He was well-respected. Believe me, I'm down in this area right now. I can tell you right now, I miss Sean Payton already. But I also know, I know for a fact that Sean Payton liked to win. I don't know too many coaches in the NFL that don't like to win. And if they are in the NFL that they don't like to win, then they shouldn't even be in the NFL. But Sean Payton liked to win. And when you're not, how I would say this, giving a coach the, 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 the players that they need to do their job, Eventually, that coach is going to find a way out, or you're going to fire him. Uh, Sean Payne is not that kind of guy that's going to get better or anything. Man, this dude got too much class for that. But Sean Payne is the kind of guy that would be like, okay, this guy I don't want to do right. I got to make moves. And I believe since he's a neighbor of Jerry Jones, and he's also coached with Jerry Jones, that they just kind of got in a conversation one day and just said, hey, I bet you can take us to the Super Bowl. If I get you the players, will you come over here? It's not even about the money. Sean Payton don't need no money. Sean Payton likes to win. That's what I like about it. He want to win. I mean, you know, Jerry, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Hey, I'll let you be the coach and the general manager. Now, this doesn't come from a source. This is just in my little mind. It may be true. It may not be true. I'm just saying. I'll let you be the coach and the general man. You'll bag off completely. Let me run the team. I'll let you run the team. Hey, the problem, though, you're going to buy me out of my Saints contract? No, nah, I can't buy you out of the contract. But if you retire, I may have to pay less, but I can get you in one year. I may have to pay some. I mean, not less. I may have to pay some, but I can get you in one year. Cool. I retire. I stay out one year. I come coach the Dallas Cowboys. You allow me to run the team. I build, I get you in the Super Bowl in two years. Now, the conversation, I don't know if it went like that. I'm just, this is strictly speculation. But that's really how football talk is. It's normally done over a drink or a lunch or golf. It's normally done, and that's just how it works. Next thing you know, Sean Payton's retired, even though I predicted that he would retire two years prior. Once they jacked the Saints out of that NFC championship with that bad no call, I think that it was just enough. We ain't even must talk about the year after that. So when all that happened, I think that's what was going on. So now I believe that the Dallas Cowboys organization is in a position to where they know they're going to get rid of the coach they have now, and they're going to bring in Sean Payton. And Sean Payton is probably going to take the Dallas Cowboys to a Super Bowl. May not be the first year, the second year, but give him time to work with that organization. He'll take him to the Super Bowl. Dallas fans should be excited about that. But here's what Dallas fans shouldn't be excited about this year. You you guys are not out of it just because you lost Dak, Dak Prescott, just because you were exposed in the Tampa Bay game. You're not out of it. I've seen teams turn turn things around. That was just game one. That don't that don't mean anything. This does though. I don't believe 
the organization believes in the coaching style at all. I think the organization do not believe in the coaching style. And I think that in time, you're going to find out because they're going to fire the coach as well as they should. The last two coaches Dallas has had has had the talent to win a Super Bowl. But for some reason, they just can't seem to do it. At least the second one got, well, both of them got them to a playoffs, but you just can't understand it. Dallas Cowboys in 26, 27 years have not made it past the division around in the playoffs. That's sick for an organization that dominated the 70s and don't, well, co dominated the 70s and dominated the 90s. That's bad. That organization has not been the same since Jimmy Johnson left, which I thought was a mistake, but that's for another show. And, and, and I'm just going to say it like that. I, I sincerely believe that. In time, with Sean Payton, that the Dallas Cowboys can be a Super Bowl contender. I sincerely believe that the New Orleans Saints, if they make some organizational changes, change your general manager, they could be a Super Bowl contender. And, and I'm not saying that it's because the, I think the general manager is um, a bad guy. I'm saying that he's had several years to put a team together to win a Super Bowl. I am sick to my stomach to know that the New Orleans Saints passed on Kenny Pickett. That just literally eats at me every single time I watch that kid playing preseason. I thought about how do you pass on Kenny Pickett? Mm, It changes the organization. Now you got the young part of Alvin Kamara with Kenny Pickett. You bring in, uh, 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 I can't say his name, Olave. You bring in Landry. You bring in all these guys with that kid. Your contender, your defense was already intact. And then you do not make it better with Tyron Matthews. Unfortunately, you didn't address the offensive line like you should have. And Poe J.W. just kind of got beat up Sunday. I think he needs to just get used to that. Go ahead and get a hot tub ready because I think you're going to be in there a lot, buddy. But you did stand in there and you stand tough. You stood tough. You got my respect in that game for being tough. You still don't have my respect. Can you lead that team to a Super Bowl? And that's just something I had to say. Prove it to me. Until you do, I I just can't. I need you. Look, I wish you the best. I'm cheering for you, but you got to prove it to me. I'm not going to give it to you off what you did in college. How strong your arm is. Win some freaking games. Win some big games. Now, look, I'm going to say this to this. I'm excited, guys. This is my first podcast. I'm just so excited. You have no idea how excited I am. On this show, and I leave y'all with this, on this show, we're going to be bringing on guests. And I'm going to get to the bottom of something that's been bothering me for four years now. Why do the Saints fans and the Cowboy fans hate each other so much? That literally is something I want to find out. I can understand Bill's Mafia, Chiefs Kingdom, and the Chiefs keep busting their behind. So, of course, Bill's Mafia have a reason to dislike the Chiefs. They do. Uh, Talking about Dallas and the Saints, here's what I do know for a fact. When I was young, I'm I'm older than most people, so when I was young, you only seen two teams. That's why it blows my mind when people say they're Pittsburgh Steelers fans that are around my age. You, if you're in your 50s or 60s and you say you were a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, you were just a fan of Pittsburgh because they was winning Super Bowl. You absolutely knew nothing about them because you couldn't watch them play. We had three channels. And let me help you out. We only could see the Saints on Sunday and the Cowboys. That's it. That's all you could see. The Saints came on at 12. The Cowboys came on at 3 unless they had a night game. And since the Saints were horrible, they didn't have very many night games. So every Sunday you knew at 12, and as soon as the Saints went off, Dallas came off. So a lot of the, the Cowboy fans left Dallas and went to New Orleans. Now, Dallas 
fans say, okay, well, you're a fair weather fan, you can't stay. I mean, personally, guys, I mean, I don't give a rat if somebody been a, a, a fan of a team for 50 years and, and that's the only team they have liked. I think they're missing things. I think you're missing a lot when you say, I like just only one team because I'm being honest with y'all. Listen to me closely. <laughs> it's a lot of good teams out there. It's a lot of excitement out there. Me, personally, I'm a Saints and a Chiefs fan. I don't care what nobody said about that. You just not a real fan, whatever you say. But let me help you out. Until you go to Arrowhead and visit it yourself, it's contagious. When you go in Mercedes Dome, it's contagious. Those are the two things I like about the team. Their fan base is extremely exciting. It's energy when you're in their building. So, and I'm kind of addicted to energy. I'm not, I'm like, I don't want to be around nobody dead. So, with that being said, I'm going to get to the bottom of what is big argument and what is big fight, which I kind of know where it comes from because a lot of fans left Dallas and came to the Saints. Um, then some people like myself, I couldn't stand the ground Dallas walk on. The minute Joe Montana hit the white clock in the back of that end zone, that was the last time I was going to shed a tear for the Dallas Cowboys. And it didn't get better because the next year they lost to the Washington Redskins. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, did I say it right? They lost to the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC Championship. Then they lost to the 49ers in the NFC Championship. Then they lost to the Washington Redskins in the NFC. And that's three years in a row I was through. That was the last time they was going to break my heart. Now, I didn't care if they won in the 90s. It broke y'all hard in the 90s too. Dallas break everybody hard. And it, it is what it is. Don't get me wrong, a lot of other teams break their fans' hearts too. But Dallas just seemed to do it more than anybody else lately. I'm just saying, everybody knew that Dallas wouldn't make it out the first round when they had the 49ers. Everybody knew it. I know I did. Everybody knew about the Dallas fans. So, with all that saying, this show is called Let's Talk About, I'm sorry, this show is called Let's Talk Sports. If you think you can out talk me when it comes to football, I challenge you to come on this show. And that's just the way it's going to be. But remember, when you come on this show, know, your, know what you're talking about. I was talking to a guy on Facebook last night who was, who was a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan. It's so funny, y'all. Huh? <laughs> and this guy is talking about how he's been a Steelers fan for 50 years. This is then I told him, I said, you know. As long as Mitch Trubisky is your quarterback, I'm not worried about you guys. Mitchell Trubisky is your quarterback, I'm not worried about you guys going to any Super Bowl at all. And that's just me being honest about what I feel about Mitch, Mitchell Trubisky's ability to lead. That's number one. Number two is... <laughs> He was trying to make the argument that because I like two teams, I'm not a real fan. So I said this, and then he, they always make this statement. So let me get something straight for y'all before I let y'all go. The New Orleans Saints did not win the Super Bowl the year that Hurricane Katrina hit. The year that Hurricane Katrina hit was the first year that New Orleans Saints became a Super Bowl contender. But the truth of the matter is that same year, they lost to the Chicago Bears in the NFC Championship. Anybody want to try to tell me I'm wrong? So stop saying the Saints won a Super Bowl the year Katrina hit. The Saints won a Super Bowl five years later in 2009, 2010, not 2005. Hurricane Katrina hit August 29, 2005, and I will never forget that. This is let's talk about sports. If you think you, this is let's talk sports. If you think you got this, if you think you can come on this show and shut me up, if you think you know your stuff, you think you know football, well, come on. Come on this show, let me see what you got. Let's talk sports. We out. They don't want you shine, dog. They don't want to see your name here, like. Do it anyway. Hey, do it anyway. They want to see you fall back. They don't want to see you fall back. Do it anyway. Hey, do it anyway.